So then, after you get through all this processing in, and they take you to a cell block, on the way to the cell block, they march you through the center of a block that is full of lifers. And it's, it's everything you've seen in the movies. They're throwing stuff. They're spitting. They're screaming. And they, they know, do they know what you're charged with at that point? They don't care at that okay. point. Everybody coming down through there it's fair game. is getting initiated. It's almost like the, I just almost associate that to me, I guess, just because I've never been there uh, with some sort of uh, comparison to hell. Yeah. Like, you know, just it, once you're in hell, I mean, I'm in hell. Yep. So who cares about you? Who cares about you? I'm just going to throw That's stuff right. at you. I'm in hell. We're all in hell together. And what are they throwing? Whatever they can fish out of their toilet, whatever they can excrete out of their body. Yeah. I mean, they don't have a lot of things to throw. <laughs> yeah. I've read that, that, that it's a, yeah. that's a kind of a weapon that's used is uh, one's own bodily fluids. Yep. Also, um, once they were, people were able to figure out why you were in there, a relative of mine, not, not the relative who raped me, but, uh, he, he was charged with molestation and, uh, um, he went forward and confessed, but I, I remember when he was in prison and my family, my parents were very concerned for him because he was serving in a, a state prison in New York and was one of the, the high security facilities, which means, you know, hard timers, lifers, and the prison systems, it, as my, as he put it to me later on, he said, you know, criminals are the scum of society and sex offenders are the scum of criminals, and they will let you know it. And that's the way it is in prison. Murderers have high status, and the more bodies you have the higher your status is in prison. doesn't matter how you got those bodies. Just the fact that you've killed somebody or multiple people put you on a high plateau in prison. Sex offender is definitely the worst in the prison system. And you find that other sex offenders that are hiding make the most noise about someone else Hmm. to keep the attention off of them. Right. With the internet and the state prison lookup systems they have nowadays, it's hard to hide your charge. Oh, yeah. I did uh, I did debt collections for a year. Let me tell you, I can find anything about anyone who's ever been incarcerated. That's They're right. They're the easiest people to find in the world. And other inmates can find them. They call home. They say, get on the computer, look up this guy's DIN number, which is department identification number and find out everything right then. So if a guy's, you know, trying to hide his crime or says he's there for something else, they find out and then it's not good. You don't find any good info, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, they don't like care. Like long walks on the beach. <laughs> yeah. But if the guy's well, a murderer. That's the harmony profile. If he's a murderer, that's okay. Yeah, he's all right. But if he has anything with sex in the crime, somewheres then they target them now what happens um if they're uh, uh I, i'm just curious um what happens if they're a uh, rapist but they're also they, they kill their victims now what what kind of status does that earn them you just kind of leave them alone no they don't they um they burn them out whatever they can do i mean uh anything with sex whether whether there was a body or not doesn't really matter to them but they, that's even worse a lot of times because they assume the body would be a child right? in many well, that's cases. A, I think the assumption is with sex offense, I mean, it's a child. Right. And a sex offense can apply to any age. That can be an 18-year-old to a 17-year-old. And that's that's not to say that it, it's right when it happens, that you're breaking the law, but... Right. Yeah, but not just an 18 to 17-year-old. A 40-year-old mean, woman. Yeah, it could, it could be adults that are right. way over the age and you've oh, just yeah. offended somebody by sexually you know exactly. raping them or whatever yeah but the word sex offender people typically think of a child totally that you've done something to a child and so 
Yeah, it's a huge stigma. Outside, inside, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all about survival, that's for sure. So, I guess, tell us about your experience. I mean, a little, just a little bit of your experience in there. You know, yourself, dealing with people. Um, did people know your status? It's easy to find out. So, most of them knew as far as I I think that they knew. I'm not certain, you know, I really didn't have any way of knowing if they know or not. I didn't advertise, that's for sure. My military training came in handy. I mean, you never give information out if not necessary. Suppress, suppress. Yeah. I had, you know, some incidences that took place. Uh, One time I was walking back from uh, one of the meals. It was about a half mile walk from where I was being housed to the mess hall. And then another half mile back. So I'm walking back, and one of the guys that I hung out with is walking beside me. And I hear somebody coming on the other side of me at a pretty fast clip. And we walked fast, but this person was walking faster. And about the time they pulled up next to me, I look over to see who it is, and I got a fist straight in the face, just bam. There was a hit out on me. And, uh, when you say a hit out on you to beat you up or to yeah. kill you? No, it was to, uh, well, it didn't matter. Either one. <laughs> okay. It was probably to provoke you, though. It was to, to, get you to get in a fight. Eliminate me from the position I was in at the time because I was working for uh, a tailor shop where they make clothing, inmate clothing and uh, correction officer clothing. And I had become the leader of the shop at that point. I mean, that's just what I do. I, I keep working my way up. Right. And interesting to point out Joseph, um, with Potiphar's wife in uh, the Bible. Um, now Joseph, um, didn't commit a crime, but for this sentence you're serving, you, you actually hadn't done anything. Um, and while he was in prison, he actually became the second in charge to the head jailer. He ran the jail basically. It's amazing. I just I just find that that parallel yeah, it's interesting cool. how God kind of, you know, <laughs> he prospers you and he looks for you. So there was a another guy that wanted my position. So he put a hit out on me. Now, what happens in prison if if you have any marks on your face or anything like that, they assume you've been fighting and you immediately go to the box. So you lose not only the dorm that you're in, you know, you lose where you're working, you go to the box for 30 to 90 days, and, you know, they fill in when you're gone. Somebody else wanted that position, put a hit out on me. So, you know, the best weapon you have in prison is your brains, you know, you got to be smart. So this kid whacked me. I started to take off after him. My buddy grabbed me and pulled me back. He said, no, 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 no. He says, you're, you'll be the one that goes to the box. I said, oh, man. So I'm yelling at the guy. I said, my sister hits harder than that, you know. Just, <laughs> just all this. And anyways, um, got back to my dorm, and thankfully this was a dorm where they had refrigerators. And my buddy had, like, a bag of ice in the refrigerator uh. or a jar or something. He had ice. So he went and got that, put it on where I got hit, which it just kind of uh, – grazed my eye a little bit right up in here and of course my nose because it's you know sticks out like this but but we were able to take care of a lot of it right then you know without anybody noticing or anything like that and it was probably a couple days later when I was in the tailor shop working this the correction officer in there goes around makes rounds you know watches all the guys working and one day he's like looking real close at everybody and he gets to me and he notices that. He says, oh, what happened to you? And I kind of played dumb. I'm like, what? And he says, oh, he says, what happened? I said, oh, yeah, it was kind of dumb. You know, I got these glasses. When I read books, I have to wear these glasses. I'm not used to them. I forget they're on, you know, and I just like 
brought my hand up or something and whacked the glasses and they smacked me right here and you know just had to make up an excuse because he would have put me in the box mm -hmm. yeah so i came up with a legitimate lie that he was satisfied with so <laughs> but the the hit didn't work and i found out who put the hit up on me and i went right over to him and i looked him right in the face i said next time you got something for me you bring it on yourself. You know, you come see me and we'll take care of it. I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk like <laughs> But that was the end of that. He knew, I knew who it was. They don't like that when you find out. <laughs> what did you do to keep people, I guess, away from you? You know, I mean, it's got to be pretty intimidating when you get in there and you meet all those people. And yeah. what was your, what was your um, I guess, your go-to strategy? for dealing with people pretty much kept to myself i didn't get involved in stuff because that's when things happen you know you got guys out playing cards or you know getting involved with things and when you're involved with them they start analyzing you know try to read start learning brain. more and more about each other i stayed away from that because uh it seems like confrontation like that provokes more so maybe your military train kind of worked out in this regard i think so i mean just just keeping the eye eyes and ears open to everything that's going on around you you know it's just uh, it's hard to explain uh you know god plays a huge part god had to be right there with me because i don't know why i wasn't damaged more than i was i mean i had other things like uh one morning i go to put my boots on and they're full of toothpaste my boots are full of toothpaste so somebody had gone in got my boots filled them now the best was that hard too it was it had dried by then no it was all still pasty okay so but i stuck my foot right you can use socks. that as like drywall patch you know yeah so um I never let anybody know. It's so like what I did was I, you know, found out what that was. I just took my socks that I stuck in there, and I used that pair of socks to clean my boots all out. Nice. And I just threw them away out in the main garbage, way down underneath. Never told anybody. I never had any kind of reaction to that. Nothing. So that person didn't get a rise out of you. Couldn't get a reaction. They don't even know. They were probably wondering if they had even done it now because there was no reaction whatsoever. <laughs> did I do that? I can't remember. I swore I did that. <laughs> right. <Man. laughs> so sometimes, you know, it's the best way is just keep quiet. Yep. And you had said something um, to me about you – you just basically made somebody think you were crazy at one point. Maybe, yeah, maybe that was it. Like, can you can you just t tell me? I thought that was a really good story. I yeah, one of one mind. of my best defenses was never reacting like that to petty things. Okay, because I had an incident in a bathroom one time. There's certain rules that these inmates they have these unwritten rules you know mm -hmm. the bathroom is always a problem area you got 60 guys in a dorm and you got 10 sinks in a bathroom okay now everybody has to get ready at the same time and all this stuff so what these guys would do is take a soap dish put it on a sink now there's soap dishes on that sink so that's their sink you can't use it until their soap dish is gone. That's one of the unwritten rules. So I go in the bathroom to get ready one day, and it's like every sink has a soap dish on it. You can't use any sink. All I wanted to do was rinse out a washcloth, right? So I go all the way down to the last one. I'm like, oh, you don't know where the person is. They might be in a stall using the bathroom. They might be out somewhere else doing something, but they want that. They possess everything, you know. So I'm rinsing out my washcloth, and this guy, this big, 
black guy comes over and he was ripped this guy and <laughs> wasn't going to end well 